Dartmouth Indians leading one to nothing here at 12-18 to go in the first period. A goal scored by J.C. Freight as the Indians came out strong right in the first couple of minutes of the game. And the Indians really coming to play here so far. Fans really enjoyed that. Looking to tie the game and the Indians on the kill. Eduardo Reynum, reshot through his screen, deflected wide. A good deflection there out in front by Dean Mason. Matt Hansen making the tip out there in front of the net. And a great opportunity on the break out there. Looked like a good, just a little shoulder bump, and he kind of just lost his footing. Didn't really look like the stick got into the feet, and a good no call by the ref there. Buck is deep behind the Indian net. Up around the wing it goes. Bridgewater raining. Got through his shadows, seeing some action and making some good saves, but they have been keeping the shots from the outside. Yep, Bridgewater playing a little bit more physical now after that tough start. You can see their blood's pumping. They're all over the Indians now, and it should be a good game to go from here on out. Stokens left on the power play, so the Indians will be able to get back here at even strength and hopefully uh, get the pressure up. John Bichot taking the draw. The puck went right to Machado, and Machado sticked it wide, and the puck was out to center ice. Now a chance for the Indians. Here comes Maddox Carrero down the wing. Intercepted and taken away by Bridgewater Raynham. Bridgewater Raynham starting to play physical as the Indians keep it in. Puck goes out of play. One of the things about Bridgewater Raynham, and it's always the case, and I'm looking out there tonight, they always seem to have size. Yeah, they've always got size and speed. They've got some upperclassmen out there. And one of the senior captains behind the net. Reed Martin cuts right in front of his own net. It's intercepted. There's a shot deflected wide. Dangerous move there by Reed Martin cutting through the crease there. Um, but, you know, unfortunately, he was just trying to get it out of the zone. But those, we always used to call that the no-no zone back in my day. There's a shot through. Now back the other way comes Freights. Freights for the Indians. Loses an edge at the blue line. Anytime you see a player go down, you're looking to see was, was he tripped or not as the puck is cleared down. It's an icing against the Bridgewater Arenum team. It's going to be icing against Bridgewater Arenum, so the Indians get the offensive zone faceoff. Yeah, we got some challenges here today. We have a Bridgewater Arenum roster with some of the names chopped off. <laughs> so we're going to be uh, working on that a little bit. Most of the names are there. Quick shot, but uh, fortunately there was a centerman change. J.C. Freights plays it down deep. Damian Medeiros throws it in front on the back end, and it's intercepted by Bridgewater Raynham. Blocked there by Aiden Cruz. Just got his body in front. Recognized there was a little bit of an odd man rush there. An unfortunate turnover, but was able to block it. It was a good play. J.C. Freights with an opportunity back the other way. And the Indians can't put that one in the back of the net. Up and down he goes. Machado, though, down here, seeing a lot of action for the Indians. And so far, he's played it pretty well and squared himself up with the puck. Here's Reed Martin. Shot off of the stick of Cullen Larrabee goes up and out of play. And we've got a faceoff coming up as we take a look at Larrabee. Yep, so far so good for Machado. He's looking, he's looking solid back there. He's gotten some good looks. He's been able, he's been able to field the puck early. Um, so hopefully that will continue for him. He comes out. That's up ahead to Larrabee. In the neutral zone. Larrabee out of the net, throws it out in front, hops over the stick that time. And the follow up player, the trailer. And back comes Bridgewater Arena. That was a good play by PJ Arena to intercept that pass. That, was, that was, looked like a goal right on his stick, but um, just a great play there. Luke Caniff for the Indians, out into the neutral zone. Couldn't connect up with Cullen Larrabee. Bridgewater Arena collects. Zach Sinclair. Can't quite get it out as it's kept in by Luke Caniff. Lays it down behind the net. About halfway through the first period. Dartmouth leads one to nothing. Puck slides down and it is going to be an icing. Once again, the Indians get the offensive zone faceoff. Well, both teams will have to certainly have their opportunities so far this, this afternoon. And um, just great hockey so far. You know, they're coming out banging. They're coming out there. Bridgewater Raynham out of the five-minute mark left here in period number one. And now a big break here for Bridgewater Raynham. Out of the net comes Machado. And a great defensive play by the Indians as Maddox Carrero got back on the back check. Now a chance here for the Bridgewater Raynham Trojans, but it's cleared out that time by Luke Caniff. And some big opportunities there for Bridgewater Raynham. 
That was a great, great back check there. It looked by, it looked like uh, by uh, Caniff, but um, you can see the Bridgewater forward is bar barreling down here. Had a ton of speed, but fortunately, a few, a few of the Dartmouth players are right on his tail and were able to stop him in his tracks before he was able to kind of try to bury it on the breakaway there. Ryan McGinn is taking the draw for Bridgewater. Raymond goes back to the point, bouncing puck against the boards. Puck slides wide of Machado. Josh Nelson pops it back to Damian Medeiros. Long pass up ahead to J.C. Freights. Good job on the back check there by Mike Dolan, though. And now another chance for the Indians. I think Machado has seen more rubber, but the Indians have gotten their chances, too. There's a shot by Medeiros! And a save by the goaltender. That's Rich Popson making the save that time for Bridgewater. It was a tough one. It was a little bit of a rebound. Bounced right off his pad, came right out. A nice juicy rebound. But, um, yeah, he's been solid so far ever since. So we'll see how it, it develops further into the afternoon here. Glad to have you looking in here on Dartmouth Community Media, both Channel 9 and the town of Dartmouth. And, of course, on the Dartmouth Community Media YouTube channel live. There's a chance for the Indians. Aiden Cruz wheeling and dealing at the circle. Lays it down deep, looking for Damian Medeiros, but Shane Breslin, one of the co-captains for Bridgewater. You talk about like somebody like Patrice Bergeron. There's a guy who back checks all the time. And if you really pay attention, he, he prevents as many goals as he creates on the offensive end. And that's why he's so valuable to his team. You know, it's it's not just a one a one faceted game. It's it's multifaceted. So you got to you got to play offense and defense and well in the neutral zone as well. Last thing a coach wants to see is a a lazy forward not getting back, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's Reed Martin behind the net. Bridgewater Rain and one of those sizable players there, number 25, Noah Reardon. Back come the Indians. Puck chipped into the offensive end. James Sherrier on the four check for Dartmouth as Dartmouth tries to get an offensive opportunity. 3.45 to go in the first period. Dartmouth into the offensive end. It goes out to center ice as Cullen Larrabee was fighting for a possession. And here's Reed Martin. Backhand pass through the neutral zone that time by Luke Caniff. Down it goes behind the net. Here comes Bridgewater Arena through the neutral zone. That's P.J. Arena. Backhanded into the Dartmouth end. 3.20 to go in the first. Reed Martin. Long pass. No icing. As it goes behind the net. I didn't see it hit anybody, but officials wave that one off. Yeah, a little bit of a questionable call. A lot of times the icing, it's, it's more up to the officials' interpretation than the, <laughs> the actual rule itself, it seems like, right? Nice hit there by Josh Nelson as he drops a man at the blue line. Physical play picking up. The Juwata Random wrist shot. Blocked in front that time by Will Gibson, the freshman defenseman. What a great play by Gibson to get his body in front of the puck there. Those are the types of dangerous shots where you're shooting through a screen. So if you can get a shin guard on that, if you can get a skate on that, oh, that's, that's great. That's exactly what uh, Machado wants from his players. You can see he's, he's placed right in front of the Bridgewater, the opposing Bridgewater forward. And um, doesn't even really seem like he tries to stick out his leg to block that, but um, just kind of blocks it by happenstance. But nevertheless, that's exactly where you want to be, and a good play resulted from it. Another save there by Machado. And thinking about topics that coaches like to see, how about a freshman defenseman in there getting some big-time minutes, number 10, Will Gibson. Yeah, and as we just said, made, as we just said, made a good play there. Um, the shot, the shot th through the screen, but was able to get a, a shin guard on it and block it. It's, those are the type of essential plays that can help your team lead your team to the W. Now, Josh Nelson plays it behind his own net. That goes up on the right wing side. Indians moving up. Nice outlet pass. Here's J.C. Freight. J.C. Freight. This gets jammed up against the boards by Breslin. And that's a dangerous hit there. From You can see the numbers, and he's a little bit away from the boards. That's going to be a boarding call. And you hope J.C. Freights is okay. He's a great player. Shane Breslin, number seven, the captain, co-captain defenseman, delivering that hit. So hit, hit number one, that's fine. And he gets up, and his back is to the player, oh. and he just, gets, he just gets leveled right into the boards from behind there. Those are types of hits that that you don't want to see, you know, especially if you're a parent or, um, you know, or you're a coach and that's one of your top players. So hopefully he's, he's all right. Looks like he is. He's still out there. So five minute major call that time by the officials. You don't like to see a boarding call like that. And as you said, that could be dangerous. And now the Indians would love to make them pay here with a five minute power play. Yep. No tolerance for those types of hits anymore. So 
and, the, and the, those are dangerous types of hits. And you know, to prevent those from happening, you gotta you gotta give them the five minute major there. Reed Martin now coming up on the left side, wing to wing it goes. What a beautiful pass through the neutral zone. Here's Medeiros, shot goes wide of the net. Indians behind their own goal. Bridgewater Rain. I'm looking to move it out. Indians trying to keep it in. On the right wing corner. Those major penalties too. You don't get the player back if you score. So you can just continue to stay on the power play through the rest of the second period and for the beginning, rest of the first period and into the beginning of the second period. Yep, no, matter, no matter how many, how many goals you pump in, um, he's not coming out of the box like a, like a normal two-minute minor. Here's J.C. Freights. Out in front. Bouncing puck. Loose in the slot. Indians couldn't get a handle to it. Less than a minute to go in the period. Here's Freights. All the way across. I think he was looking for the one-timer to Medeiros, but puck was tipped away. Yeah, and those are the types of dangerous shots you want to be taking on the power play. J.C. Freights, he sees a bunch of people in front of the net. He throws it at the net, and he keeps it on the ice, which, which gives you a better chance for the rebound. So good play there by J.C. Freights. Big hit on the boards by Reed Martin. As he delivers a nice hit that time. 30 seconds left in the period. That goes down behind the net. Bridgewater Raynham now with a short-handed opportunity. Nice job of sticking that away by Luke Canniff, number 14. Here's Colin Larrabee in the final 14 seconds of the period. Puck hops over the stick of Nick Howarth. Eight seconds left. Here is Canniff into the offensive end. Canniff has a couple of seconds to try to get it to the net, but time will run out. But the Indians will still have 3-0-1 to go on that major penalty as we start the second period, and it's been an interesting first, no question about that. Yeah, uh, pretty pretty uh, great play there by Caniff at the end of the period. He showed his awareness and his composure. He's got the puck at the blue line with a few enemy players right near him. Looks up at the clock, there's about nine seconds left. He decides to turn around, skate all the way over to the opposite side of the ice, and then carry it all the way into the offensive zone and uh, just kind of nullify the rest of the period. That was, that was a great play by him. So we get a look at that Dartmouth bench. I think they have to be happy. They're certainly getting the goaltending from Machado so far. And at the end of one period, it is Dartmouth 1 and Bridgewater Raynham nothing. We've got the second period coming up next right here on Dartmouth Community Media.
Back at the Hetland Memorial Skating Rink here in New Bedford. Paul Santos alongside Andrew Santos as Bridgewater Raynham taking on the Dartmouth Indians. The only goal in the first period scored by Charlie Camisa as he got one past that goaltender right there. That's Rich Popson assisted by J.C. Freights for the 1-0 lead. The Indians coming out and getting that goal very early in the first. It's always nice to play from in front two minutes into the game. Yep, yeah, a little bit of confusion there on the goal. Um, you know, the shot was by J.C. Freights and the rebound was put in by Camisa. Um, but yeah, absolutely, uh, you're playing against one of the, as we've spoken about before, one of the top opponents um, that you're pretty much going to be playing all year. You want to bring your A game. And um, so far, I think Dartmouth's done a pretty good job of doing just that. As they've been playing them hard, they've been playing them physical, and, you know, it's, it's been pretty much a, an even game for the entire first period, and we'll see how it develops uh, here into the second. I thought the goaltender for Dartmouth, Ashton Machado, had a lot of shots, and he was making a lot of very good saves. But I will say the defense was keeping the shots pretty far out, you know, around the perimeter, outside the dots. I don't think you really got a shot from right out at point-blank range, but whatever shots that Machado, you see him there, did get, he made the save. Yeah, but I'm sure that's the message that's uh, that's been coming out of Coach Capello, Coach Rose's mouth all along, is to limit their, their top opportunities. Darwin's done a good job of that. Um, as you're saying, they, they weren't able, as you're saying, they haven't been able to get many quality shots on net, and that's been thanks to some of the great defensemen on Dartmouth High, the freshman Will Gibson, also uh, uh, Luke Caniff as well. So. There's the goal right there by Camisa. I uh, just showed the replay, and here we go. So the Indians still got three more minutes on this power play. There's a shot and a save by Machado, a shorthanded opportunity right out of the gate by Bridgewater Arena. Tell you, those shorthanded goals, they can be backbreakers. Here comes Freights. Freights down behind the net. Moving it around the wing. Bridgewater Arena trying to chip it out, but they can't do it. Freights all the way across the circle. Pass out in front. Score! Josh Nelson. Beautiful job of passing. And the Indians have the power play goal and a 2-0 lead. What a beautiful goal there by the Indians. Tic-tac goal. J.C. Freitz gets it here in a crowd and kind of just throws it over to the off wing. Uh, and then they get the puck in front. And it looks like you just get the shot right on net and we're able to put it right on the outside. It looks like the goalie was moving from post to post. And they were able to capitalize on that little movement there and put, it, put the puck to the opposite side of the net. And just a great play by J.C. Freitz to get that puck, send it all the way over to the off wing, tape to tape. And just a great play there by Dartmouth. So it's 2 to nothing. The Indians are still 2.15 to go here in the second period. And it looks like there's an icing against Dartmouth. So let's see what happens here. The Indians still with an opportunity here due to that, that boarding call that resulted in the Indians getting the major power play. Yep, another two, another two fourteen. And hopefully, Dartmouth can get it, possess it, and get some more quality opportunities here. The goaltender Richie Popson needs to be tested a little bit more. And a couple of times they've been down there tight, they've been able to get the puck past him. So far, Machado not landing anything behind him. And here comes J.C. Freights, the senior forward, into the offensive end. Goes down deep, out in front. Almost tipped in there by Damian Medeiros. You've got a stick on that. Yeah, great look there on the feed from J.C. Freights. Damian Medeiros trying to get the redirect in uh, and squeeze it in through the post, but unfortunately there was nothing there. Reed Martin into the offensive end. Down to Freights. Saved by Popson. Oh, another great job of passing by the Indians. And there you see Richie Popson making the stop. Yep, Reed Martin over here on his knees pretty impressively finds Medeiros down low, sends it tape to tape again, and unfortunately there was nothing there. The goalie had the, the five hole covered up. Puck is cleared all the way down. A minute 25 here left on that man advantage, that major penalty against Bridgewater Raynham. The boarding call. Now behind the net. Here's Luke Caniff. Puck chipped back down by Bridgewater Raynham. Behind the net it goes. We have a man knocked down. We're going to have a tripping penalty against Dartmouth, and it's going against Nick Howarth. Yeah, tough penalty to take there for if you're Dartmouth. You just got ahead 2-0 against a really tough opponent. 
And um, now you're going to spend the rest of your power play now on a four on four, and then you got to spend about 54 seconds uh, shorthanded now. So hopefully Dartmouth can keep the momentum going, but this is a tough blow for them. So now it's going to be four on four for about the next minute. And then Bridgewater Rainham will have a power play for about a minute. There's a chance here for Bridgewater Rainham. They collect in their own zone. And out they come. 12.46 to go here in period number two. They see Freights intercepts the puck. Puck down into the Bridgewater Rainham end. In the corner, the Indians fighting to keep it down into the offensive end. Now Reed Martin. Martin out in front. Oh, he tried to get the pass across. They score! Damian Medeiros from Aiden Cruz. And it's 3-0. Well, last game, I was talking about the comparison between Reed Martin and Kale McCarr. And you just you just missed it on the replay, but what a beautiful cutback he had. He absolutely fooled that that opposing player on Bridgewater Raynham. He was able to slide it over to Aiden Cruz and then get it in front for the goal. That was a great play. That, that play all started with Reed Martin there on the point, though. What a look. What a move on the point, and then what a look on the on the off wing there. So the Indians getting control of this game at 3-0. As a puck across the crease. Dangerous for Popson. All right, that major penalty, that's really hurting Bridgewater Arena. Two power, well, actually correct that. It was a power play goal and then an even strength goal. He's buying out in front looking for Damian Medeiros cutting to the net. Well, you can see these seniors out here. You know, they, they got skill. They've had skill for a long time. A lot of them were playing as freshmen. But now... Four years, all that experience under their belt, and they're really showing off their skill here against Bridgewater Rainham as the puck is iced. Yeah, and you can see the chemistry. They, it seems like they all have eyes on the back of their heads. They all know where they're going to be on the ice, and that's a huge that plays to a huge advantage when you're taking off on a tough opponent like Bridgewater, as we just saw. It's a couple of tic-tac-toe plays there, and um, just really impressive stuff here from Dartmouth. A great way to respond to that penalty. They come back and just score another goal anyways on that four-on-four, four, so... 33 seconds left on the remaining power play time here for Bridgewater Arenum. Trojans really need to get the next goal to get back into the game because the Indians have been in control. Bridgewater Arenum has had as many shots on net, if not more shots on net than the Indians, but the quality of the shots have not been what the Indians have had. Yeah, and I was, I, we were saying before, about it's all about the quality of opportunities. It seems like they're kind of getting pucks on net, but they're kind of just throwing it in there, and the Indians are getting quality, quality looks here, and that's been the difference so far. Back end around in front, Machado down on the butterfly, and the puck is still loose. I think Machado thought it was covered up, but it's still alive. Wrist shot. That goes wide of the net. The rebound off the backboards. They can't get a handle to it. I think we all thought that was covered up. <laughs> Ryan McGinnis down there for Bridgewater Raynham. Indians look to move it out. It hops over the stick of McGinnis. Comes all the way down here in the Bridgewater Raynham end. Some real good looks, perhaps the best looks of the game for Bridgewater Raynham, but they still find themselves down 3 to nothing against the Indians. Physical play picking up is Cullen Larrabee. Delivers the hit. Now a backhand by Larrabee. Great save by Popson. Oh, Popson got that left pad down just in time. Puck has moved out now here by Mike Dolan. Great save there by Popson. Trying to stop some of the bleeding here. Here's Reed Martin. That's to go wide. Puck deflected away as Bridgewater Arena getting a stick in the passing lane. Getting hit that time was John Bisho along the boards. Trying to dig it out. Robert Quill. A long pass up ahead. Zach Sinclair. It's knocked down on the offensive end that time. And... Looks like we have a penalty against Josh Nelson, and it's going to be cross-checking. Let's see if we can pick it up here. No, there's a backhand play that time by the Indians. Yep, nice little save there. Good recognition by the goalie to see where see where the player was at, in his peripheral vision behind the net and was able to get the pad down over there and in, inside in tight on the post. Great save. 
Big opportunity here now for Bridgewater Raynham. Can they answer the Indians? As Dartmouth is up 3-0. Again, just another costly penalty for Dartmouth. Um, up 3-0 though, so let's see if they can keep their momentum going. Keep the puck out of their zone. Keep limiting those quality opportunities from Bridgewater. Popson sticks to the side and Bridgewater Raynham lining up behind their own net. Trying to get set up here on the power play. That pass goes too far ahead. Aiden Cruz with a great pass in that last goal. Slides it across and the puck is iced by the Indians by J.C. Freights. There goes the first 30 seconds down the tubes. Is Breslin. Now he did not gain the center ice red line and it's going to be icing. <laughs> As we said, it's always up to, it seems like it's more up to the ref's interpretation than, than the rule, uh, rule itself. But, you know, sometimes when you're right before that red line, they'll wave it off and then other times they'll call it. I guess it's all... I guess it's all how the game's been going, but it's always it's always interesting to see how the refs are going to call that. It seems like they've been calling that stricter lately. Yeah. Used to be able to just get, like, over your blue line, and, and sometimes they would just let that go, like you said. Dean Mason into the offensive end for Bridgewater Raynham, looking to move it out of the corner. Setting up in the umbrella. Trying to make a drop pass. Colin Larrabee bothering the player. Now from the circle out in front. Two passes, open net, they couldn't get it in. Oh, some great setup, back and forth passes, and they just couldn't finish. Great opportunity there for Justin Peters, and uh, took him a second to corral that puck, and while he was doing so, Machado was able to slide over and get his body in front of the puck. Um, if that was tic-tac, if he just shot it right off of the, if he wasn't taking the time to corral the puck, that probably would have been a goal, but... Nevertheless, Machado did a great job recognizing they had the puck and moved over from post to post, made a great stop. Here's Nasif. Drop pass to the point. Couldn't move it down. Indians thinking about a shorthanded opportunity as Damian Medeiros almost broke out. In the right wing corner. Down it goes behind the net. Bridgewater Raynham with the last 12 seconds of the power play. Back to the point. They play it behind the net. Thinking about a wraparound. Machado ready for that one. There's a shot from Point Blank Range. They score! Shane Breslin got the initial shot. And I believe there was a rebound that was banked in, and it is 3-1. to one. Uh, Tougher for your Dartmouth there, but the, the defensive gets it and kind of walks in and takes a shot, and it kind of just bounces up and down. And it was kind of hard for uh, Machado to locate that puck there. And, just kind of an unfortunate bounce and really an unfortunate turn of events. They always say that a two-goal lead is one of the worst leads in hockey. And now this is what we've got here with the Indians, a two-goal two lead. Looked like Breslin might have tapped that in after the shot by Quill. But needless to say, it is a 3-1 to one game now. And the play is going to be offside at the offensive blue line. Perhaps we could take a look at that one again, maybe the next time out. Because it looked like that shot was made. And then it kind of popped in the air. The shot was... Yeah, let's take a look at yeah, it Yeah, the here. original shot right here. Yeah, it's really hard to tell if he gets a stick on that, but nevertheless, just kind of a tough a tough bounce there for Dartmouth. And I think the shot by Breslin carried through. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what, what it, it seemed like. That's what it looked like to me as well. So that was very important that Bridgewater Arena, from their point of view, capitalized because, you know, 3 nothing. Make it three to one. Now it's a game. Again, as I just stated, you know, two goal leads the worst lead in hockey. They always say so. Now we're in a situation where we're up two, and now it's in the middle of two. It's almost anyone's game. All right, still just a little past the halfway point in the game. Just under the seven minute mark to go here in the third period. Puck all the way down here on the goaltender Popson. Oh, and Kai Andre gets a shove that time <laughs> from Shane Breslin. Breslin didn't like the stop and snow in his, of his goaltender. However, <laughs> I, I'm sure he would prefer that over the over barreling over the goaltender instead. <laughs> Let's see it right here. See, if he doesn't stop there, he's just going to run right through the goaltender. Kind of nothing you could do to stop. That's why he's got his <laughs> hand up there. But, you know, nevertheless, you want to be able to, you want to protect the tendy. That's always your number one job as a defenseman. So you ever see something happen to him that might be seem like it's unsportsmanlike, you got to step in and try to protect your tendy as much as you can. Face off now to the right of Popson. Yeah, the old snow on the goaltender move. That, <laughs> that, that's always something that's going to get the attention of the defenseman. But again, as you said, it didn't look like that was going to be on purpose. He was just trying to stop without running him over. Right. 
Face off. Damian Madera delivers a big hit on Mike Dolan. Back comes PJ Arena. Arena trying to get the backhander off. Let's see what we have here. Looks like it is an icing. Hey, oh, it's a penalty hey, against Dartmouth. It's, it looks like they got Damian Medeiros. I want to say maybe boarding. You know, the officials call that five-minute penalty against Bridgewater Rain. I and mean, sometimes they, you know, if you're the other team, you know they're looking for something to even things up. Yeah, I didn't get a really good look on it because they're right below us here on the balcony. However, um, just a tough penalty. <laughs> just a really tough penalty there for Dartmouth High to take. Again, as I said, you're up by two goals here. Uh, you know, you just got to try to stop the bleeding. You got to try to limit those opportunities. You got to try to stop Bridgewater from getting momentum as much as possible. Two minutes for boarding against Medeiros. And Bridgewater ain't him. They got a power play goal before. J.C. Freights was thinking about breaking down shorthanded. Breslin rides him off. Freights still battling for the puck. Like he flipped it back into his own end. Kai Andre has to go back to get it. Physicality picking up, and it's always physical with Bridgewater Raynham. Yeah, you know, the <laughs> Bridgewater get a little frustrated at the speed of J.C. Freights. He's kind of just blowing by everyone, and so they're, they're trying to use the stick and hack, and, you know, that's, that's where those types of roughing situations kind of occur. Kai Andred behind his own net, and he clears it out. I can remember even when you were playing and your brother was playing, you know, you play different teams, and they have different styles. Bridgewater Raynham was always like the physical, gritty, tough, big kids ready to hit you. Yeah, your body would definitely feel it the next day as well, some bumps and bruises and some soreness. Uh, yeah, absolutely. The Bridgewater, they're always a, a mucking type of team, and they're always going to come at you hard. You know, they're always a good team. Nick Howarth going hard into the corner. The Indians are really responding with the physicality, but you got to stay out of the box. That's the only thing. Yeah, and that's when these situa types of situations get really dangerous is when you kind of start to, to lose the head on your shoulders and make some, some irresponsible types of checks and physicality. Chance here now for the Indians short-handed. Shot goes high and wide as coming down was Cullen Larrabee. A great move there by Larrabee in the upper slot from backhand to forehand. Unfortunately, wasn't able to find, find the twine. Machado makes a save at the other end on the tail end here of the Bridgewater Rain and power play. Just the final few seconds. And out of the box comes Damian Madera. always danger for a breakaway the other way as the shot goes wide of the net. Dean Mason for Bridgewater Rainham couldn't get control. And now Nick Howarth trying to move in on that Bridgewater Rainham defense. But they got back just in time. A yeah, perfect little dump and change there. Kind of stop the bleeding, float the puck out of, that, out of the zone and keep, uh, keep the pressure away from Bridgewater. Good play there. Settle it down. So a big kill there by the Dartmouth Indians, and we're down to 4.14 to go here in period number two. Now I was thinking about Dartmouth with a 3 0 lead and got a couple of penalties. I'm sure that Coach Capello over there is not that happy with that because, you know, that gives the other team an opportunity to get back in the game. Right, and I'm sure Dartmouth is just trying to match the physicality that Bridgewater's bringing, but you got to be careful when you're trying to do that. Because if you end up taking some, some unfortunate penalties, that's when it can get dangerous. Here's McGinnis. Score! McGinnis makes it a 3-2 game for Bridgewater Raynham. Yeah, nice play by McGinnis here. He kind of just uses the traffic and floats right through here in the top of the slot. Rips one through. I don't think Machado saw it. He looks like he got a piece of it, and it just kind of trickles through. And just a really unfortunate turn of events here for Dartmouth. They were just up 3 nothing. Now it's 3-2. And, you know, you just got to try to, like I said, try to limit that pressure and try to try to stop Bridgewater from, from tying up the game here. So here we go. We have a real battle here with Bridgewater Raynham. It's 3-2 at the Headland. Bridgewater Raynham definitely showing some... Some fight, in on goal it goes, and down to the butterfly goes Machado. I'm not sure he ever got the shot off. Machado had his paddle down on the ice. Bridgewater Raynham coming right back at the Indians. Seem to be invigorated. Yeah, yeah, like I said, you know, it's a game of it's a game of momentum. So Bridgewater's got all the momentum right now. It'll be interesting to see how Dartmouth can continue to respond and, and try to keep them keep that pressure uh, away from them. Scary on the left wing side for Bridgewater Raynham. 3.18 to go in the second period. Freights. Oh, a man went down, and they were looking for the tripping penalty. He didn't get it. 
Yeah, and from what I saw, it looked like a pretty good no call. It looked like Freitz was just trying to get at the puck, and then Bridgewater fell. Here's Medeiros. He scores! <laughs> Damian Medeiros on the breakaway. It's 4-2. Wow, what a huge goal here from Medeiros. A great look there from the defender. And he just kind of cuts back from forehand, backhand, and Bridgewater goalie is unable to get a pad on it. And just a great response there from Dartmouth High to, to, to regain that two-goal lead and to keep the momentum in their favor. Wow, well, after Bridgewater Arena and made it 3-2, to two, they, they came right back at Machado. And it seemed like they came so close to tying it up. But you're absolutely right. This goal right here by Medeiros, wow. And what a beautiful pass. What a beautiful look by that defender. I was unable to see who it was and what number it was. Um, however, what, what an amazing pass. Now another chance, a pass across the crease. Indian forward unable to collect. Now it's Reed Martin. Now Reed Martin played forward his entire career, but Coach Capello opting to use him back as a defender. And he's really... Really tightened up the defense along with senior co-captain Josh Nelson. Yeah, he's doing a great job back there. As you can see, he's adapted the position well. He seems like he's still trying to get acquainted, but he's doing a great job nevertheless. Nick Howard tries to keep it in. Reed Martin couldn't do it. Now a pass ahead. It's a breakaway for Bridgewater Adam. And a penalty is coming up. It's a save by Machado. Penalty shot. And there is a penalty shot coming up. Oh, this is one of the most exciting plays in sports as Noah Reardon, number 25, was in all alone. It's something that you don't see too often here at high school hockey as well. Yeah, it looks like they're going to get him for a, a slash or something like that. The one hand on the stick. He's just trying to get his stick around the front of the, of the opposing Bridgewater player and just try to knock that puck away. But unfortunately, the, the ref is going to call that. How big is this? And now a huge opportunity here for Bridgewater. Uh, Noah Reardon. So it'll be Noah Reardon coming in on sophomore goaltender Aston Machado. And he's a defender, so we'll see what kind of moves he's got in his back pocket here. Here comes Reardon on Machado. Saved by Machado. Yeah, Reardon kind of coming in nice and slow, which is what you want to do. He's looking for a hole, and he goes backhand, forehand, and Machado fortunately sees, sees that move and seems like he's seen it many times before in practice, I'm sure. So a great stop there by Machado, great recognition of what, what was happening there. A sophomore goaltender coming up big here for the Indians late in the second. Very important time of the game as here comes Cruz. Cruz tries to put one short side. And the save made by Richie Popson. It's a good look at the goaltender for Bridgewater Random. Yep, Crude com Cruz coming around with some speed at a tough angle, and um, Bridgewater goaltender is just able to kind of close all the holes and, and get a pad on it. Reed Martin trying to keep it in at the left point, covered behind there by J.C. Freights. Follow up here by Aiden Cruz. Plays it behind the net. Damian Medeiros. Behind the net. Throws it in front. Oh, Freights couldn't get the backhand off. Up on the wing comes number six, Anthony Musari. What a great pass there from Damian Medeiros to J.C. Freights in front of the net, huh? Looked like he didn't even he didn't even have his head up, and he still knew he was there anyways. That's how great these play. kids have been playing together for a long time. J.C. Freights now with about a minute 15 to go in the period. Freights plays it down behind the net. Around it goes. Maddox Carrero looking to move it out in front. Intercepted by Noah McGinnis. Puck bouncing in the center ice area. Robert Quill. Back it goes. Shane Breslin, the senior co-captain, flips it down on Machado as Bridgewater Arenium changes up. One minute to go here in the second period. Garmouth leading 4-2. And the puck went out of play, and there'll be a face-off to the left of Machado. Well, things have definitely picked up here in period number two as far as the offense goes. Yep, great game so far. Both teams having a ton of opportunities. Seems like Dartmouth, again, still has some more quality opportunities than Bridgewater Raynham, hence the score 4-2 to two right now. Um, obviously, we can see how quickly those things will change, so we'll see how it goes in the third. 
Back to the point it goes. Reshaw through. Blocked in front that time by Aiden Cruz. Reed Martin around the horn it goes. Here comes Damien Medeiros. Wing to wing looking for Freights. Freights with a bouncing puck. He gets the shot off and a nice save that time by Popson. Back the other way comes Bridgewater Raynham. Pass across. Indians collect. Say that last time down, Andrew, it didn't look like they were going to get anything out of that, and they got a pretty good shot on Popson. Yeah, when all else fails, just throw it at the net, you know. Anything can happen. There's a pass out in front. Great defensive play by Justin Peters. Two Indians alone in front of the net. Yeah, if Justin Peters doesn't get, doesn't get a leg on that, then, you know, you're looking at a – you're looking at a great opportunity for Dartmouth, so just a great play there by Justin Peters. So a very exciting second period after the first period where there was only one goal by Charlie Camisa from J.C. Freights to make it 1-0. We had five goals here in the second period. Josh Nelson, a power play goal to make it 2-0. Damien Medeiros made it 3-0. And then we were thinking, okay, that's pretty good, feeling pretty good, 3-0 over here. But then Breslin comes back for Bridgewater Arena and make it 3-1, to one, followed by Ryan McGinnis to make it 3-2. Damian Medeiros on that beautiful breakaway to make it 4-2, to two, followed by the Ashton Medeiros stoning of the Bridgewater Arena player on that penalty shot. So how about that for action down in, <laughs> down in the second period? Yeah, great. <laughs> Again, great game. Um, all the parents that came here for the early afternoon uh, puck drop at 4 o'clock, again, getting rewarded just like uh, last Friday there. So, um, yeah, it's it's been a lot of fun watching it, and um, it's been a great game. A lot of speed, a lot of physicality between these two teams here. At the end of two, Dartmouth 4, Bridgewater Raynham 2. We've got the exciting third period coming up next here on Dartmouth Community Media.
Dartmouth Indians have returned to the ice here at Hetland Arena. To be followed by Bridgewater Arena. Dartmouth leading Bridgewater Arena 4 to 2, and it's been quite a battle here. Difference in periods, right? First period, just the one goal for the Dartmouth 1 0 lead, but second period, kind of a goal explosion as the Indians getting three more and Bridgewater Arena getting back into the game with their pair. Yeah, plenty, again, as we said before, plenty of opportunities for both teams. Um, however, a little bit more quality opportunities from Dartmouth. Uh, more quality opportunities from Bridgewater later on in the second period, but Dartmouth's been able to kind of keep it under wraps and come back and score that goal and keep Bridgewater from building that extra momentum. Because once you're up three goals and then you let up two, it almost seems like there's nothing you can do to stop the other team, right? But, um, you know, fortunately they were able to come back and score that fourth goal, that crucial fourth goal. And uh, there's a good shot of Manny Machado, or Machado in, the, in the net there. Um, Ashton Machado, sorry, not Manny Machado. <laughs> 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 who's, had, who's had an absolutely an, ama an amazing day so far, too. Yes. You know, he's, he's been on top of all the pucks. And a couple of the goals that Bridgewater scored weren't really his fault. And um, he's absolutely keeping Dartmouth in the game here as well. And how about that? Ashton Machado, you see him there stopping that penalty shot at the tail end of the second period. That could have made it a 4-3 game. Yeah, yeah. Again, crucial crucial stuff from, from Ashton Machado. He seems dialed in whenever <laughs> whenever Bridgewater has the puck. I've been watching him a little bit. Bridgewater has the puck in tight. He, he's ready to go. He's, he's, got, he's in a stance. He's got a good angle on the puck. Those are all the things that you want to see in a goaltender, Some, a goaltender who's alert and who's got the right angles. Aiden Cruz taking the drive for the Indians. Had a great pass across right in front of us here as we're on the balcony for one of the Indian goals. The Indians have had a lot of tic-tac-toe tight passing in front of the enemy net. A lot of skill on the Indian team at the forward position. Yeah, I mean, if you're Bridgewater, you want to do your, the best you can to limit those opportunities. How about that save by Machado? Two of them. One with the blocker, the second one with the glove. I was just talking about Machado's alertness. Look at him. He's all over that right there. Right all over that rebound, all over the initial shot. Just a great play from Ashton Machado there. They get a good look at Machado. Just the sophomore makes the save on Ryan McGinnis. And the faceoff will be coming up to the right of Machado. So goaltending. You got a, a sophomore here who's getting a lot of experience doing a great job. So that's comforting for Capello. You don't really have to worry about the net for the next couple of years. For sure, you know that's a super, super important uh, position to the to the Dartmouth team. Cullen Larrabee hauling a man down right in front of the net after taking a hit was Luke Caniff. And let's see, down on the ice there, number 25, Noah Reardon. Yeah, it looks like Reardon's a little bit shaken up on that play there. It seems like the Dartmouth <laughs> cross check there against. Cullen Larrabee. Yeah, it seems like Larrabee had, had one too many hits there on the boards, and it was only a matter of time before the ref was going to raise the hand. And now you got, you're got you in probably one of the worst positions that you could be in. It's the beginning of the, of the third period. You're up two goals, and now the other team's on the power play looking to get that momentum right back. A lot of times the coaches will talk about team discipline as Damian Medeiros breaks out shorthanded with Aiden Cruz. Medeiros out in front of Cruz, and did the goaltender get a piece of that? Pops and keeps it out. Unbelievable play by Damian Medeiros there in the defensive zone. He just he just steals it from Brid from Bridgewater, comes in, and makes a nice move. Unfortunately, wasn't able to tuck it in. Bridgewater Arena now in a power play, back into the offensive end. They try to keep it in. They do at the point. That was Nasif taken away. Here comes J.C. Freights. J.C. Freights does a nice job poking it into the offensive end. We talk about earning brownie points with the coaches. How about that play there from J.C. Freights? He takes the hit to make the play. Bridgewater Arena moving it out. The part that's probably driving the coaches crazy a little bit, though, is that you know, the Indians, right, you want to stand up to Bridgewater Arena, you want to take the hit, as Camisa, who has a goal, couldn't move in as he's knocked down by Breslin. But you want to stay out of the box as Machado makes a save. 100%. It's really, really hard to win hockey games when you're in the box all night. So you got to try to limit those penalties as much as you can. Rashad threw a tip, and that goes wide of the net. Is getting a stick on it was Matt Hanlon from the other point. A wrist shot through, saved by Machado. A screenshot. He was able to follow that one through. 
Yep, good composure from Machado. He didn't move a little, didn't move too much there. Just kept his body right in front of the puck. Was able to get a pad on it. Well, we're announcing the game here from the balcony, and the downside is when the puck's at the other end, we can see better from center ice. But when the action is down here, what a great view we have. We have the same view as this camera right here. We can really see plays develop, especially with the power play being down at this end of the arena. Ten seconds left on the Bridgewater Arena power play. Puck taken away, Damian Medeiros. Almost went in deep, but realizing that they're still on the penalty kill, drops back and the penalty is over. And out of the box comes Luke Cannon. And is knocked out, Aiden Cruz drilled at center ice. There's a wrist shot through. That just misses the net. As you can hear, some of the parents are not happy with that hit as Aiden Cruz is already initially shaken up and already kind of limping off the ice there. Uh, just kind of an unfortunate circumstance there. A little bit of a dirty play. There's a wrist shot through. That goes high and wide. Jake Knudsen got a golden opportunity before and just missed the net. And now the puck is cleared out. This game is really getting physical here in the third period. And the officials have called some of it, but they've let some of it go too. Yeah, it's, it's always nice to see the officials let the boys play, but at some point you want to be able to protect your players as well, so it'll be interesting to see how they call it for the rest of the game. Luke Caniff got the puck across the crease. Now in the offensive end, Evan Meniz. Battling down there with Maddox Carrero. Four to two Indians. Puck is iced by Bridgewater Raynham, and nice to see the Dartmouth Indians getting an offensive zone faceoff. Aaron's definitely letting the officials have it here. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about the icing, and, you know, it's always so questionable when they call the icing, and it seems like some frustration from Diamond fans about, about the ref finally actually pulling out the whistle for that one. Colin Larrabee taking the draw for the Indians. Puck is near the slot. And what are the Indians going flying through the air? That was Colin Larrabee going hard to the net trying to get a rebound. The Indians are playing hard, that's for sure. Both teams are here in the third period. Puck loose in the slot. Skated away here by the Trojans. Puck slides in here wide of Machado. Josh Nelson up on the wing. Tries to backhand it out. Kept in by Bridgewater Raynham. Collected here by Josh Nelson, senior co-captain behind his own net. Plays it out the other way. Couldn't clear the zone. Battling for possession here is Luke Caniff. Behind the net, Nelson can't make a play. Nasif for Bridgewater Raynham. Intercepted here by Caniff. Laid back down by Bridgewater Raynham. And the puck is cleared out. Bridgewater Raynham with some good territorial play here for the last minute. Behind the net, Reed Martin now for Dartmouth. Long pass up ahead through the neutral zone. Stopped here by Dylan Rezendis, and they fired right back in. Yep, Dartmouth finally able to get a change there. A few of their players look a little gas at the end of their shift. Jack Dion plays it back to the point. Bridgewater Raynham down in the corner. Looking to make a move out front. Battling to keep that out was the senior defenseman, Luke Caniff. Now Damian Medeiros. Two goals tonight. And offside is J.C. Freights barreling down the left wing. <laughs> He's rolling his eyes and <clears throat> pulling his head back because he knows he tried to get on. He tried to stay on side. He had the back skate reaching back and just couldn't wasn't able to do that and now we have a neutral zone face off here Bridgewater Raynham turning up the heat a little bit there had territorial play for about a minute 30 but was unable to convert yeah and right after a crucial penalty kill by Dartmouth as well Josh Nelson behind his net Damian Medeiros tries to do a backdoor pass but it's stolen and the puck is shot dangerously from the blue line and Machado makes the save. Unfortunately for Machado there, it just kind of bounced off one of the Bridgewater players and it never really made its way to the net. Bridgewater Raynham trying to get the turnover. Medeiros looking for Freights. Down deep it goes. Mike Dion, Dion behind the net for Bridgewater Raynham. Under 10 minutes to go in the third period. Bridgewater Raynham, long pass ahead. That's going to be too far as number 24, Ryan McGinnis, was looking for the outlet pass. Yeah, looking for the stretch pass. Just a little bit ahead of him. Wasn't able to get it, but looked like it was almost a sure breakaway. It was one, one Dartmouth defender back. Looks like Coach Capel is talking to his players right now. 
and probably telling them to keep up the pressure and keep, <laughs> keep out of the box. 21 years behind the bench there for the Dartmouth Indians. A lot of experience there, and Puck is now down at the Dartmouth Indian end. I'd like to get it as Josh Nelson. Flips it all the way around. It's kept in at the point. Played in deep here by Bridgewater Raynham. Nasif, spin move. Down behind the net, looking for Robert Quill. Back to the point, reach shot through tip, saved by Machado. Oh, a redirect by Zach Sinclair. And Machado was able to follow it through. Nothing harder than a deflected shot. Yeah, again, Machado, look at him. He's looking over the defender. He's aware. And there was a little bit of a tip there. Luckily, he was, he was in just the right spot, was able to get a pad on it. And just nice awareness there by Machado yet again. Collected here by Will Gibson, the freshman defenseman. Now to Medeiros. Damian to Aiden Cruz. Cruz through the neutral zone, just a freshman. Had some good talent coming up the ranks here for the Indians. Left wing side. Bridgewater Raynham. That's Musari. <laughs> Goes down. Indians trying to put some offensive pressure on. Now Bridgewater Raynham finally breaks out. Here they come into the Dartmouth Indian end. Shot saved by Machado. Off the stick of Shane Breslin. JC freights back the other way. Machado has been very, very good with the angles and really preventing any kind of a, a top shelf shot. Doesn't show a lot of the net. Yeah, and Dartmouth, as we've talked about before, has been a good job at limiting those really quality opportunities. So Bridgewater is just trying to get anything on net at this point, down two in the third. You want to try to buy any type of goals. They don't ask how. They ask how many, right? <laughs> yeah. Nelson along the boards, battling with Dylan Resendiz. Down goes Cullen Larrabee. The Dartmouth fans looking for a call and do not get one. Reed Martin up on the wing. Martin. Put up against the boards. Big hit that time by Larrabee. As Larrabee takes the body right down here in the defensive end. Josh Nelson trying to keep the puck away from the front of his own net. Jake Knudsen looking to collect here for Bridgewater Raynham, but Josh Nelson moves it out. Collision. Steal here by Bridgewater Raynham. They couldn't get the shot off. Nelson with a hard check. Physicality picking up as Reed Martin flips it out. What a great play there. That little stick lift there from, it looked like Charlie Camisa right at the faceoff dot. It looked like the Bridgewater was about to get a shot off and then he got a stick right in there and he was unable to get anything. Great defensive player there. And great, great defensive play and great awareness there from Charlie Camisa. He's got a goal tonight for the Indians as Bridgewater ran him with a chance. Drop pass, saved by Machado. Off the stick of Quill. Now Reed Martin in the corner. Bridgewater Raynham getting their chances with six minutes to go in the game. Bridgewater Raynham player knocked down that time by Luke Caniff. Out comes John Bichot. Physicality really picking up here. The refs doing a good job just letting the boys play. And just as I say that, now it looks like we have a, is that a penalty? Or it could be offsides. Looks like it's offsides. Yeah, great play there by Machado. Doesn't really give that Bridgewater player anything to shoot at. Um, looks like the top corner was open, but he was able to get that shoulder up and, and stop the puck. So, again, just a great move by, by Machado. That was a nice job there. Bridgewater ran him on that drop pass, trying to get the goalie moving a little bit. But as you said, Machado had the angle covered. Yeah. He's done a good job all night of not really giving the Bridgewater players too much to work with in terms of holes and, and angles. So um, good on Machado. He's, he's done great tonight. Breslin up on the wing here for Bridgewater Raynham. Five and a half minutes to go in the period. Long pass ahead. A chance for Bridgewater Raynham. Kick saved by Machado. Back to the point it goes. Reshot through. Blocked in front of the net. Will Gibson was there. And Machado has been keeping the pucks wide and not giving up any juicy rebounds, and he comes up big again. And again, that last play there, the Bridgewater player has it right at the top of the circle. Um, 
and Machado just comes all the way out of the net, limits <laughs> limits pretty much every hole that you can that you can limit there, and and makes a stop on him. Has a nice clean look at it. And again, wasn't a super quality opportunity. Um, nevertheless, it was a great save. I'll tell you, keeping it a two goal game is so big. You know, if Bridgewater Raynham can capitalize on one of these, it just changes everything. For sure. And as the minutes tick down here, it's it's growing more and more in Dartmouth's favor. He tried to sneak it in short side as Dean Mason gets a shot on Machado, but Machado held strong next to that left post. Yeah, and like I was saying, with the time kind of dwindling down here, if you're on Bridgewater, I'm sure the message from the coach to the players is to get everything on net as possible. You see all kinds of wacky goals from different angles at, on the net, but again, Manny Machado has brought his A, uh, Manny Machado, Ashton Machado has brought his A game today. He's done a great job. Now here's Kai Andre going into the offensive end, ridden off by P.J. Arena. Under five minutes to go here in the third period. Time becoming a big enemy here for Bridgewater Arenum. Reed Martin at the blue line. Pass up ahead. Big hit on the boards as Cullen Larrabee got drilled. He was against the boards. You could have a boarding there, but it's going to be an offside call. Seems to me the Indian player was far enough away from the boards that you could have had a boarding there. Yeah, really not sure about the no call on this one. He got absolutely sent into the boards there. If that's not boring, I'm not sure what is. P.J. Arena delivering the hit. Yeah, that's that two or three feet, the coaches always say, the two or three feet against the boards, that's the danger zone. In fact, they actually have it highlighted all the way around the arena now. There's a different color on the ice all the way around. and You got drilled. There's definitely a few things that you look at, too, when you're the ref. You want to see if the player let up. You know, if they didn't if they didn't hit him full speed or from behind, if it was as, as ugly as it should have been. But, I mean, from that that far away from the boards, that's got to be called there. How about that hit by Howarth? Nick Howarth just delivers the body of the blue line with four minutes left. Bridgewater rain him. They like to play this way. There's no question about it. We talked about it before. They're always big. They're always physical. Question is, got to be within the, the rules. And I know some of the... Dartmouth fans here are thinking that the officials could have called a little more, but... Yeah, and a couple of unfortunate penalties that have been taken by Dartmouth, but overall, I think they've done a great job of maintaining their composure and sticking to their game. Martin, trying to keep it away from the front of his own net. Put some effort in there. Gets it to Damian Medeiros. Now it's PJ... Excuse me, <laughs> it's Freights. JC Freights. He was checked. 3.23 to go in the period. Buck banked out in the neutral zone. Bridgewater Arena, they're working hard to try to get that next goal. But Medeiros takes it. Medeiros has two goals tonight. Medeiros cuts to the net, goes down, can't get it to the middle. And Bridgewater Arena back the other way. Three minutes left in the game. Wing to wing pass. Gibson comes hard into the corner here, down below us. It looks like, Cruz. And it looks like that could have been a tripping call on, on uh, Damian Medeiros there too. You got tripped in there tight, and the refs just seem to have uh, put the whistle in their pocket for the night. Gibson looking to move it out. Knocks a man down at the blue line. Rich shot through. <laughs> Blocker saved by Machado. 2.38 to go. Here's Cruz, not a Medeiros. Very entertaining hockey game as Medeiros fires it high and wide. Freights couldn't get a shot off from the wing. 2.28 to go. We'll keep an eye on the goaltender there. They might pull him with a two-goal deficit. That's Popson. But the Indians have the puck in the offensive end. Collected here by Noah Reardon. Reardon had that penalty shot, but Machado stopped him. Here's Bridgewater Raynham. Popson goes to the bench with two minutes left. Bridgewater Raynham has the extra attacker on. Back to the point it goes. Bouncing puck. Indians looking to get a handle to it. From the slot. Broken up that time by Nelson. Under two minutes to go. Back to the point. Rich shot through a screen. Knocked down by Reed Martin. Martin can't get it out. They try to backhand it out. Keep it in. Bridgewater Raynham with the extra attacker. Shot through off the side of the net. Reed and out in front. Rich shot through again. Saved by Machado. A lot of great puck movement. A lot of great pu puck movement there from Bridgewater. And Dartmouth just kind of struggling to get it and get it out of the zone. They got it a couple of times but weren't able to. 
And as you see, a nice shot there from the point. However, it went right into the breadbasket of Ashton Machado. He was able to make the easy stop. And yeah, it looks like we got a timeout here. I believe it was Bridgewater Raynham that took the timeout. I think the official was pointing that way with 137 to go as we take a look at the Dartmouth bench. But, you know, I was thinking a moment ago that you see the temptation on the part of the team that is defending, and you see that empty net at the other end of the arena, and you could see one of the Dartmouth players trying to break out the center ice. But, you know, with a two-goal lead, yep. you really don't want to do that. You don't want to do that anyway, but especially with a two-goal lead, just defend the two-goal you know, game. Why are you trying to get the extra <laughs> open net goal? I know it's tempting when you see the, the yawning net at the other end. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what player it is, but I know exactly what player you're talking about. Uh, it looked like uh, there was a little bit of a stalemate there. The puck was between Reed Martin and whatever other player it was, and he kind of just looked at him like he had it and then kind of started skating out of the zone. That's a dangerous play. You want to just get the puck and get it out. You don't got to worry about the empty net on the other end of the ice. In this situation, you're playing a top opponent. They've got an extra player. They've got all kinds of momentum. They're moving the puck around in, in your defensive zone there. You just got to be able to get that out. And there's our view up above the ice here. What do they say? High, high above ice side. <laughs> got some, some good angles here of the last few minutes of the game as Bridgewater Arena wants to put the pressure on. You talk about that player at center ice. I mean, it's six on five. If that guy cheats out and gets caught, you have probably five, six, seven seconds of the six on four. So you don't want to do that. But let's see what happens. 137 to go. Certainly a tall order for Bridgewater Arena to get two goals in 137, but it's happened before. Here's the faceoff. The Indians trying to dig it out. Reed Martin flips it out. And that was big as Ryan McGinnis has to go back to get it. Huge play there from Reed Martin. Just, just able to find it. Gets it on the backhand, which you don't ideally want when you're deep in your defensive zone, but is able to lift it up over the Bridgewater players anyways. Great play. Stolen. Here's Cruz. Misses the open net. TJ Arena back the other way. Can't move it out. 108 to go. Now here come the Trojans. Looking to set up in the offensive end. Nelson tries to play the body. Steals it. Shoots it at the net. He scores! Josh Nelson puts it away for Dartmouth. Yep, great little check there from, little hip check action there from Josh Nelson. And then he just he's just able to get the body on, get the loose puck, bring it in, and then find the empty net. Good play by Nelson to kind of ice the game here. Great play by Josh Nelson. He has been playing physical all night. He's been going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Bridgewater Rain him all night long, showing that senior leadership, and he loves to take the body. This is the old-fashioned, and I'm going to drop an old name, the Johnny Busick hip check. <laughs> Johnny Busick back in the 70s used to love the hip check. And he went in there, and he didn't get all of them. Didn't get all of them, but he got enough to get the puck. He created the loose puck. Sometimes that's all you need. Now Larrabee back the other way. 5-2 to two Dartmouth. This is a nice win for the Dartmouth Indians against this Division I opponent, Bridgewater Raynham. Indians in Division II this year for the first time. They were in Division Three, what felt like forever. And now they're in two. I was talking to Coach Capello. Division II is going to be a little tougher than three, no question about it. But... Not that much tougher because there's a lot of great teams in Division Three too. So, you know, <laughs> it is what it is. You get in that state tournament, you got to play great hockey. Bridgewater Arena still with another chance. Saved by Machado. In the final seconds, Machado flashes the left pad. And the Dartmouth Indians are in a hard fought. Five to two win over Bridgewater Arena. As they surround Ashton. Rashada right below us here. <laughs> Great win from the Indians. I mean, it seems like they it seems like they just they did everything they needed to do to win here today. They got the early goal, they got the lead, they protected the lead, they kept the other team from getting too much momentum and, and coming back all the way back into the game. Just a great all-around effort here from, from Dartmouth. And a great Great game by that that man, that young man right there, Ashton Machado. Get a good look at the sophomore. Look at that, Coach Capello. He's saying, hey, thanks for saving our bacon, as the coaches <laughs> like to say many, many times in this hockey game. Yeah, Machado definitely deserving of all the hockey hugs he's getting here.
uh, tonight for sure. Really enjoyed the penalty shot stop. You know, you don't see a penalty shot too often, but to get the penalty shot and basically to stone the player coming down, and that kept it at four to two. We talk about the offense and the great play by the defenseman, but the goaltender making that save on the penalty shot. How big was that? Oh, so much pressure in that situation there too. You're coming, the other team, they're coming right after you. They're down a couple of goals. They put they put a couple on the board and they have an opportunity to, to make the game even closer. And, you know, a good old fashioned duel there between him, uh, him and Machado. I believe it was Noah Reardon, the defenseman. And just an unbelievable save there by Machado. He knew exactly what Reardon was doing coming from forehand, backhand in there. I mean, backhand to forehand in there tight. And he just makes it such a huge clutch stop there. And that was obviously um, very, very essential to the win, as well as the other amazing saves that he made as well. Shane Breslin and Ryan McGinnis getting the two Bridgewater Arenum goals for Dartmouth. Two goals by Jamie and Medeiros, two goals by Josh Nelson, and one by Charlie Camisa. Another important point of the game, Andrew, before we wrap up, a 3-0 lead for Bridgewater Arenum. So you're feeling pretty comfortable, right? It's 3-2, but no, Bridgewater Arenum storms back and makes it 3-2. And when they got it to 3-2, the Indians got that goal to make it 4-2 right away, right away. Damian Madera is boom, right away. And it kind of just, just a big punch back right there. What a key moment to get that goal. Huge, and there were a few. There, were, Like I said, there was the penalty shot, there was that goal by Medeiros. Those those are massive plays. They're, they're heavily contributed to the W there. Because if that, if that goes in the net, then it's a completely different hockey game. So the final score here from the Hetland Arena, it is the Dartmouth Indians 5 and Bridgewater Arena 2. We hope to see you next time as we continue our coverage of Dartmouth High School hockey all season long here on Dartmouth Community Media. For my partner, Andrew Santos, I'm Paul Santos. We'll see you next time right here on Dartmouth Community Media. Good night.